controversy just sparks the best memes. I love it, especially if it does not affect me, because all I want to do is paint plastic toy soldiers. And if you're like me and you just want to put some paint on the new Primaris Invictor Tactical War Suit, then this is probably the video for you. One thing I love about miniature painting is that you can make your painting as complex or as simple as you want. It's really just down to what is fun for you. It's also interesting to step out of your comfort zone once in a while and vehicles to me are definitely not something that I paint very often. So this was going to be a fun little exercise and at the same time it would produce a beginner tutorial on how to paint the Invicta Warsuit. It was also a good excuse to use this for a change. Now while this is a more beginner focused video I will make follow-up episodes that will focus on taking a more basic paint job to the next level with a few easy tricks. So if you're not subscribed yet what are you waiting for? I really like the polished look of these Games Workshop products. I pulled out all the contents and usually I get rid of the booklet right away but had a bit of a hunch that this time I would need to closely study the building instructions. I was a bit disappointed that there is only decals for Ultramarines as I thought about painting another chapter but since I wanted to use the decals for this video I just went with it and started to assemble the silent baby carrier. Hello instructional material! Using my 9 box clippers I started getting the pieces out of the sprue. And I'm using a cutter knife to get rid of all the supports that still stick to the parts and 500 grit sandpaper to smooth out these areas. I like sandpaper to get rid of mold lines because you can fold and bend it any way you want it. Here you can see that even for these detailed pieces sandpaper is thin enough to get everywhere comfortably. I use super glue for all my builds because it dries quicker which can be a pro and a con depending on the situation. Of course you can use plastic glue if you prefer it. This kit is designed to have movable parts and I decided to run with it for the time being while assembling. I also built the pilot and made sure he fits the cockpit. I was sure I would not want to do the standard pose and I got rid of the pre-made pins on the legs which ultimately made them more poseable. I wanted a more dynamic pose than what was offered by the presets so I posed one leg straight and one leg more bent than the default. To me it's always fun to deviate from the norm and to do these alterations. It allows you to put a bit of your creativity into your builds and gives your armies or display pieces personality. I realized that these small nipples on the hip area of the Invicta Walker would interfere with my plans, so they had to go as well. I glued a piece of cork to the base that was simulating the small hill that would later justify my more dynamic pose and I'm gluing all these parts together step by step. Always making sure the pose I had in mind doesn't get compromised by any of those steps. Moving slowly here definitely pays off and I'm always double checking if I'm still on track. Of course I'm drilling any gun barrel I can find. I would probably not be finished yet if I filled all these gaps but I decided to at least fill the most obnoxious ones using Milliput and some of my sculpting tools. Once I was sure the pose works I continued to glue more parts together and ended up with 4 sub assemblies, 5 if you count the pilot as well.
I base coated the pilot black and gave it a juicy senator light white coat that would cover all but the very shadows of the miniature. On top of that I applied a coat of Ultramarine's blue contrast paint because I wanted to try a painting approach I had in mind. While the contrast paint was still wet I started to apply layers of Kalga blue wet blending it on the shapes that would catch more light. I'm doing this by adding a blob of paint and then smoothing out the transitions where both the paints meet. This mimics again a senator light and I think it works pretty good in conjunction with edge highlighting, which I continue doing here. Of course the wet blending technique works better on larger areas and I continued doing it on the knee pads, starting by applying a fresh layer of contrast paint to the shape and then adding Kalga Blue on the top part of the area and fading it towards the bottom. As I drag the paint into the darker area the mix ratio is skewed towards more of the ultramarines blue and this creates a surprisingly smooth gradient, even compared to wet blending with regular acrylics. I took another layer of more bravely applied Kalga Blue to finish this part. Sometimes cleaning the brush off of excess Kalga Blue helps blending together the darkest parts. Alternating this technique where suitable and edge highlighting I continued to work on the pilot. I do have a full video guide dedicated to edge highlighting if you're interested in that. There is a link in the top right corner as well as in the description. To increase the contrast I mixed the Kalga Blue with one of my favorite highlight colors, Wolf Grey by Vallejo Game Color, and I continued with the highlights. To make the shadows darker I took Draken of Nightshade, which is a shade color by Games Workshop. They have interesting properties, most interestingly the high surface tension that makes it easy to apply and go where it needs to go. Using a fine tip brush I'm recess shading the dark lines with it and I'm using it as a wash to shade the more complex shapes such as the helmet. You can also use these colors in a more controlled way, pushing the pigments towards the area you want to darken, like I did on the edge of this shoulder pan. I'm applying a layer of black on all the controls as well as the connective parts of the armor. Then I highlight these parts by mixing the black with a bit of wolf grey. You don't need every single color out there, often you can get by with just mixing what you have, especially for greys. I'm giving the straps a coat of black too and on top of this I apply heavy metal by scale color, leaving out the recesses and only correcting a few areas where I need to with black. You can of course use any metal color you like, personally I like the scale color metallics for the really small metal flakes which makes them easy to apply and easily usable for highlighting. Time to get some color on the war suit. Cracking out the airbrush for the large blue parts I'm applying a consistent coat of canter blue. 
I didn't want to use Ultramarine's blue for this because the Canter blue is a bit darker and I felt this was more fitting for a walker. I'm plopping a few drops of color right into the airbrush and mix it with a brush. This gives me a brighter highlight color that I spray from a senator position. This is a great way to get some initial highlights and shadows to work with. Now it's time to work on these edges. I'm starting on the foot using pure Calgal blue and as a rule of thumb I make the edges facing up more intense which gives us more credible results. Again go check out my edge highlighting video if you want to learn more about how I'm using this technique. Now it's time to reinforce that contrast. The edges are already really bright, but putting a darker color next to it will make our war suit look even better on the table. Again, I'm using Draken of Nightshade and I'm pulling the pigments towards the area I want darker. After applying the first layer, I fade out the borders with a damp brush and I keep repeating the steps a couple of times until I'm satisfied. It takes a bit of practice and also a bit of patience in the moment to make the pigments stay where you want them to stay, as you can see here. But it's definitely worth it. On more detailed parts we can go a bit more loosely and careless because the surface tension will make the pigment stay in the areas you want darker aka the recesses more easily. And a general theme that you will see again and again in this video is that I'm alternating between using these shades or wash colors more loosely sometimes and other times in a more controlled fashion. And sometimes it will stay right where we want it to and sometimes it will be a bit of a fight, but this is a really fast approach to creating shades simply because of the way these paints behave.
I was faced with the choice of using a lot of masking material and airbrushing the metallic parts too, or use a brush to apply the metallics. But I thought it would be a lot of effort either way, so I decided to just apply the metallics by brush and have no illusions, this took a while. To speed things up, I used a larger brush for the bigger areas and returned to a smaller brush for the detail work. Two Citadel shade colors I use a lot are Badop Black and Devlon Mods and I'm using them to shade the metallics here quickly. I'm going to do a video on how to approach metallics properly at all skill levels soon so if you are interested in this don't forget to subscribe and activate the notifications to not miss it. Remember when I said I would be using these shades in two ways throughout the video? Again, I started applying Bad Up Black pretty generously to create the initial shadows and this approach looks actually pretty good in my opinion because you would probably expect these parts to be greasy to make sure they would properly move against each other and this looks really close to how greased up metal would be in my opinion. And next I'm switching to a smaller brush again and a more controlled way to apply the Bad Up Black. I do this to create shadows exactly where I want them to. Opposite to earlier when I was just making sure the wash would go everywhere to create the initial shadows. A good example are these elements of the Power Fist. And again I'm alternating between the large and the small brush, a wider and a more precise application. Here I move the smaller brush more carefully again to increase shadows where I want them to be more intense. A bit of a thing that I do on all my mechs and war suits is the dark shading on these round joint elements. Since the edges will be very bright I feel like we can create a lot of interest here by adding more contrast. Eventually I decided that I wanted these lower parts of the feet metallic too. So I went ahead, applied some heavy metal and shaded it in a more controlled way with Bad Up Black and Devil and Mutt. As you can see I am using the Bad Up Black to create dark lining and separation between two distinct elements as well as creating the shades on the metallics. Then it was time to highlight the metallics. I'm using heavy metal again but I'm also mixing in a bit of speed metal by scale color every time I want a brighter highlight. Sometimes people will tell you to use metallic medium to place your last highlights but I found that speed metal performs better. Again those smaller flakes really help 
to apply your paint more precisely. To break up the monotony of the metallics, but also to distinguish them from the blue armor, it makes sense to paint some of these elements a different color. I'm going for a black like they also did on the box art, and I'm also going for a black bolter. I'm doing the highlights again by adding more and more wolf gray to the black.
added a few elements and metallics to break the monotony. The good thing with changing between duller acrylics and these shiny metallics is we are actually creating a form of contrast. Contrast meaning basically nothing more than difference and different colors, values, textures, etc. put next to each other looks interesting. More on the subject of contrast can be found on my Patreon videos and PDFs. Check out the link in my description or the top right corner and at the same time support me and my videos. To speed things up, I also airbrushed all the armor plates I left separated from the main build in order to be able to reach all the metallic parts properly. I quickly gave these plates an edge highlight treatment and decided to shade them after attaching them. The intense shading obscured some of the highlights, so I decided to give the edges another highlight using Kaga Blue again. At this point our little baby carrier was a real shiny boy which is due to the massive abuse of Draken of Nightshade. Thankfully this is easily fixed by applying a quick coat of matte varnish. Time to put some details into the cockpit area. I outlined all the lenses with a coat of heavy metal, then I cleaned up the inside by repainting the lenses black. I decided to stick to a red and turquoise for these lenses and I used Mephiston Red here to paint the first layer, mostly confined to the lower left area of the lens, which is where light would accumulate and reflect. I'm intensifying this edge by adding more and more troll slayer orange and covering less and less area until it becomes a sharp line. For the last line I add a tiny bit of ice yellow by Vallejo, but I'm making sure that this still reads as orange. I make sure that the upper right area of the lens stays dark, so we can put a reflex dot of white there for a maximum of contrast.
For the turquoise lenses I take the same approach and I only switch colors. Here I'm starting with a mix of Thousand Suns Blue and a bit of black and a highlight with pure Thousand Suns Blue and then adding a bit of ice yellow for the last highlight. And again, I'm putting in another reflex point in the right corner, upper right corner, just as we did on the red lenses. The headlights thing detail, I simply paint in turquoise and the cage around it in metallics. The rocket heads, I simply paint in Mephiston red. It's not always easy or practical to paint on freehand, so I decided to use decals in this video. There's two approaches to this that I will show you here. The first one is just using water to dissolve the adhesive that makes the decal stick to the transfer sheet. Once you can move the decal on the sheet, you can take it out of the water with pliers and carefully push or pull the decal onto your miniature. Make sure your decal is in the right place and once it's dry, dab off the excess water with a bit of cloth or paper towel. Another approach to this is using Microset and Microsole. This is especially helpful when your decals have to cover curved surfaces, keep that in mind. Soaking the cut out with your decal on top in a few drops of Microset is enough to quickly separate the decal from the sheet. Make sure you also cover the area your decal should go on in a layer of Microset and then move it on. You have some time to make sure it stays in the right place and then dab off any excess microsets. Make sure your decal is completely dry and then move to the microsole. It dissolves the surface of your decal a bit and makes it more malleable, which means it will make it conform to the shape of your surface better. Apply it with strokes leading outwards from a middle point to get rid of any air bubbles caught beneath. And once you're done, wipe off any excess microsole with a damp brush to avoid stain marks. You can see that our decals stand out massively from the more matte surface of our walker, which is kinda annoying. To fix this, I'm applying a matte varnish again, which settles around the borders of the decal and equalizes the two surfaces and gets rid of the annoying shine. Once that is done, you can happily paint over the decals and individualize them to your heart's desire. Here I decided to tone down the intense yellow with glazes of a reddish brown, a mix of scrag brown and uriel yellow in my case. The glazes also tone down the black parts of the decal, so I'm bringing them out again carefully by painting on black. Then using a blue and black mix slightly darker than the current color of the armor, I'm painting on scratches and wear to make this model look a bit more alive and the decals less sterile.
Next I finish the roll cage and all of what I do here has been shown before so let's go through this quickly. After everything was painted I wanted to put in the roll cage in a way that would allow me to open it still. So I carefully glued on the lid that holds it down. The reason this looks a bit complicated is because I glued the rocket launcher on slightly tilted to the left which made it difficult to properly place the lid. Oh and uh, yeah there were some rivets to paint, I did that by simply adding one layer of heavy metal. Okay, enough of this, I think you get the point. The pilot also deserved a few last details. I was painting this round structure on the side of his helmet like a lens as well, because why not? And these smaller details on the other side I just painted a single color red, because this was really tiny and wouldn't even be seen properly because it's tilted to the side. While added, I also added some red buttons to the controls. Last but not least, in a state of second wind and YOLO after spending hours and hours on this build, I quickly painted the lenses of the helmet in turquoise and a similar pattern that we used on the cockpit lenses, just infinitely smaller. I wanted to do a relatively simple base, but I had to also cover up the cork and create that slight slope that our warsuit's right foot was resting on. So I mixed a good portion of milliput and started to pile on blobs of the epoxy putty and slope them, falling off to the level of the base. Enter the dirt box. Using soil from the woods that I dried out in the oven creates a very credible ground texture. Much more than any rougher sand products you can buy could do and also at a fraction of the price. Because it's, well, free. And it has all these bits of organic material like small roots and bark fibers that will add some extra texture. Spreading super glue on the surface of the base and then just dumping a giant pile of soil on it, whatever sticks will stay there. Make sure you don't get too close while doing this, especially when the soil is still moist. You can get nasty reactions with the superglue. Once everything was covered, I applied English Uniform by Vallejo right on top. I don't even bother with base coating. If you have parts of the soil coming off regularly, however, I suggest applying a coat of matte varnish with an airbrush first. I'm applying a darker brown to the middle of the base to mimic some natural variation in the soil, but also to create the notion of a shadow cast by the walker. To speed everything up we can use a blow dryer. I added pale sand as a highlight color to the English uniform and dry brushed the mix on selectively. I wanted to keep the barren, sandy feel of the base so I'm not overdoing this. I used a bit of seaweed that you can get from bodies that live near the Mediterranean Sea to create some vegetational details. Just plucking out some fibers with pliers and then adding a bit of super glue to one end. Cutting that in shape and gluing my newly formed tuft of dry grass directly to the base. Quick and easy.
I see a nasty trim and want to paint it black. Then it was time to put all the sub assemblies together. Unfortunately, I don't have all the footage for this because pressing record is hard.